Hey, everybody. Miss me? I know it's been like five days since I published. I've just been so busy. Um, from calls to the clinics to um, stuff at home. But I'm happy to be back. And I've been saving this article for you because a brand new study came out this week that's causing all this hoopla in psychiatric circles. And I thought I would share what the study actually said and then what could be some of the reasons behind it. So the headline is exposure to antidepressant medication um, increase the risk of dementia. And does that mean antidepressants cause dementia? Or does that mean somehow depression is one of the causes of dementia? So um, it was a prospective national matched cohort study from Israel. What does that mean? Um, they looked at 71,515 patients without dementia, age 60 or over, um, from 2002 to 2012, and then they followed them up for the incidence of dementia from 2013 to 2017. So they got a whole bunch of people, um, evaluated them, and then looked at them 11, 12, 13 years later. And um, they were looking for exposure to an antidepressant, an antidepressant. Um, and then they looked, was there an association between antidepressant medication and the incidence of dementia? And they did all sorts of uh, statistical analyses. And in the primary analysis, the risk of dementia for the group exposed to antidepressants compared to those who had never been exposed was four times the risk. And then, you know, they adjusted for all sorts of things and it was anywhere from double risk to five and a half times the risk. So they concluded that antidepressant exposure in older people, now I'm in that group, so I sort of take offense to the term, um, was associated with dementia. Um, this is the second major psychiatric drug category that is ex shown to have an association with dementia, benzodiazepines, um, anti-anxiety medication, which has skyrocketed during the pandemic and then the subsequent social unrest, and now antidepressants. So one of the reasons I don't prescribe benzos, um, I don't like them when I used to prescribe them, nobody would ever want to stop them, and they have potential problems in the brain. And in my new book, The End of Mental Illness, there's actually a section I'm like, if you have anxiety, do these 10 things first. And now we're coming across this association and it may not be the antidepressants. It could be that depression all by itself increases um, the risk of dementia. We know that in women, it doubles the risk of dementia 
and in men, it quadruples the risk. And if you've never been depressed and now you are and you're 80, that also could be a sign that your brain is aging and it's not healthy. So what do you do? And somebody asked, well, what's the best antidepressant? Um, you know, I get asked that all the time and I'm like, well, first, are we doing the right things for our brain? Are you eating right? Lots of vegetables, some fruit, healthy protein, lots of healthy fat. Are you eating right? Are you exercising? Omega-3 fatty acids. Um, and then it really depends on the kind of brain you are. We talk about depression like it's a single or simple disorder when it's not. Depression is a cluster of symptoms that have many different causes. And so that's why the imaging work we do at Amen Clinics is so important because if you're depressed, is it because your brain doesn't work hard enough or is it because your brain works too hard? So one antidepressant like Wellbutrin or the supplement SAMe stimulates the brain and medications like Prozac or the supplements 5-HTP calm it down. So how would you know what to start if you didn't look at the brain? And now more than ever, you know, those of you that listen to me know I came up with this term called pandemic squared, is the COVID-19, the stay-at-home orders, the financial strain and stress, the fear of going to the grocery store, um, all of that is going to lead to the next pandemic, which is already here, which is a mental health pandemic, anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, insomnia, um, agoraphobia, OCD, and so on. And mental hygiene now is just as important is washing your hands. We literally need to disinfect our thoughts. And for me, I tend to start with natural treatments, but if they don't work, I'll totally put you on an antidepressant just in a really thoughtful way where if I have to stimulate your brain, I'm thinking of the supplement SAMe or the medicine Wellbutrin, they're stimulating. If I need to calm it down, thinking of things that raise serotonin. Um, but I also wanna know things like, have you ever had a brain injury? Have you had general anesthesia recently? Cause that can lower blood flow to the brain. Do you live in a mold filled house? Have you had Lyme disease? All of these things. So when we just look at the association, um, or the correlation of antidepressants and dementia, always remember correlation does not equal causation, but um, depression is untreated, is a risk factor for dementia. And in the end of mental illness, I'm like, okay, let's stop calling these things mental. They're not, they're brain. Get your brain right and your mind will follow. Um, some of the questions, the best antidepressant is diet. Absolutely agree with you. Um, Stones of remembrance, thank you. In fact, um, and the announcement's on our page, starting Wednesday night, uh, we're actually starting a six part series uh, with Cross Point Church. So my wife, Tana, my friend, Dr. Earl Henslin, Pastor Brian Moore, we're gonna do a pandemic recovery 
series and very excited uh, about doing it. We're going to talk about anxiety, trauma, grief, uh, a bit on addictions uh, as well. Um, let's see. Disinfect your thoughts. Is it true that Paxil is the most concerning antipsychotic drug for dementia? No. Paxil is actually not an antipsychotic drug. It's an antidepressant and it's commonly used. I don't use it very much because it has bad withdrawal. When you just stop it, people feel like they have the flu. So um, I'm not a big fan of Paxil, mostly when it came out and I tried it, uh, like many of my colleagues, and then when people would stop it, they just would get really sick and it was really hard. So uh, I tend not to use it that much. But if you've had a good response to it, don't just go off, talk to your doctor. Your doctor should always be your partner in health. And so um, sign up for uh, the seminar we're doing with Crosspoint Church, it's free. Um, if you haven't gotten a copy of The End of Mental Illness, the book just went back for a new reprint. I'm very excited. Uh, about that, and uh, I hope that you're safe. It seems like we're getting on the uh, tail end, at least of the first wave of the pandemic, but continue to be smart when you're in a store, wear a mask, not only to protect you, but to protect other people, wash your hands. And you know, one of the really good things about us being smart about this is we're gonna prevent the second wave. And we're also gonna prevent the flu. Um, and that was one of the big issues. You know, when the flu comes, there's not gonna be enough hospital beds. Um, but if we're doing good physical hygiene, not coughing on people, not just shaking everybody's hand, but having a thoughtfulness, right? Physical distance, but socially connected, we're gonna beat this thing. And then obviously kindness to uh, other people, no matter what color they are, and kindness to the police. Um, the level of stress our police are under right now is horrifying. And I've told some of you that I do work with the Newport Beach Police Department, love them. They, the ones I've worked with, have big hearts and it's a very scary time. Um, and I know, you know, a lot of people, they like hate the police until they have a problem. And like someone tries to break in their house and then they desperately need them. So we need to have a smart, balanced approach to what's going on in our society. We cannot let the ants, the automatic negative thoughts um, color our reactions to anyone. Hope it's helpful. See you soon. Have a great night.